Welcome back savages to another video. In this video we are going to do an experiment that I've been wanting to do for a long time. So first off on the left hand side we've got a gold shell mini doge miner. Now I used to have this up and running but it's too expensive to run these days so it's just basically redundant and sat on a shelf. Now when you do plug it in as you can see here it uses a hell of a lot of power so using almost 240 watts of power but that is on hash rate mode so it's on the highest mode that that can run at. So the other issue is that this particular model is the original model where it's only Ethernet only. So my plan is to basically do an experiment and see if we can run this off solar power. Now the problem is where I'm going to be putting it is a remote location. It's not somewhere local where I've got any Ethernet cables. So what I'm going to be using is one of these wireless routers with a LAN port on it. And what I've done is I've configured this to AP router mode with client. So what that's doing is it'll connect to a local Wi-Fi which it does have um, a connection to and then we'll be using the ethernet port to basically provide internet access to the mini doge so i'm not very happy about using that much power now if we flick it across 240 watts is roughly one amp of power which is a lot so what we're going to try and do is knock it down to eco mode and we'll see how many watts we get from that let's go okay so here we are on the gold shell console i've knocked it down to low power mode that's what we're getting at the moment. So we're getting about 166 megahertz a second, thereabouts. Let's go and have a look at the power consumption. So power consumption wise, we've gone down to about 156 watts. So that's running in low power mode. So that's all we need in terms of the crypto kit we're going to be using. So we've got the mini doors running in low power mode. We've got the Wi-Fi to Ethernet bridge right here. That's going to be um, providing the internet. Now we need to work out the requirements for the solar kit. So I've come onto this uh, website which is called jcalc.net and they've got a battery size calculator right on there. So our mini doge is going to be using roughly about 160 watts on eco mode. Be running off a 12 volt battery which is lead acid. I'm going to be running this overnight. So during the day the solar panels are going to be charging the battery. And then I just want to do as an experiment run this purely off the battery using an inverter for about six hours and if we do a calculate on there it's telling me i need a battery of roughly 160 amperes so the battery i've already got is 180 so that should be fine also you've got to bear in mind there's going to be power consumed by an inverter and any other kit that we've got connected to that as well so that's what we're going to need we have got a battery that's going to do that i might double up on batteries further down on the project sometime but initially i just want to try with one battery for six hours and according to this calculator, we should be okay. So let's go ahead and get this set up. So here we are at the remote location. So this is the battery we're going to be using. As you can see, it's a 180 ampere battery. So it should cover us for this little experiment we're doing. These two cables going into here are from the solar charger. So basically the battery is fully topped up. I've put a couple of extra terminal blocks on here so I can get some connectors on here nice and easy. And again, with everything I show you on here, I'm going to give you links in the description. So just sit back and watch the video. Um, so from the terminal blocks, we're going to have the positive going into a breaker just for some inline security. Got the negative as well. So both of these two cables will go into a timer. Now I want this to be a completely hands-free solution. Now I don't want this to be running 24-7, we're just going to do it for a couple of hours. And the way we can achieve that is I want the battery to be charged during the day via the solar panel. And then at night I want this timer to basically provide the switch to give the 12 volts to this inverter. So that's what we're going to do. So I've got this all programmed up. So you've got the two inputs from the battery going in here. So we've got the two outputs from the timer going out here. And they will go into the back of the inverter just here. So that's the back of the inverter. So we've got the inputs going into the back of the inverter and then also for some extra safety, we've got an earth cable. That earth cable basically goes all the way down here and pops out that hole there. So the cable comes outside and it's connected to a clamp which goes to an earthing rod and that's going right into the ground right there. So we're good to go. So next up, let's think about what we're going to do about the heat that's produced by the Mini Doge Miner. Now this is installed in quite a confined space, so I needed to think of a solution of how extracting the heat to the outside of this unit. So what I came across was this funky looking thing. So it's the perfect dimensions to 
fit around the end of the mini doors and my plan is to basically have it connected inside there so the plan is we'll have a 150 mil hole just here cut out the side of this and then what we're going to do is on the other side install one of these vent mounts similar to this on the other side so this will stop any rainwater getting into the unit and it's also got a mesh filter on the back to stop any bugs and stuff coming in as well so let's go ahead and drill the hole so we're going to be drilling the hole with this 150 mil drill attachment hole cutter like that shouldn't take too much effort because the hole is going to be through a piece of plastic so it's just a case of getting the right dimension so we can put the vent on so I'll mark around the hole we're going to be making right there so i'm just going to pull it apart and we're going to get our saw just line that up with that it's kind of perfect Perfect hole, all good. So I'm just making sure that the vent fits and it does, it's a perfect fit, so I'm happy about that. So next up I'm just going to use some of this sealant glue just to seal around the edges here just to make sure that no water can get in. So there we go, I've sealed all the way around the vent to make sure no rainwater gets in, so it looks good. What it looks like from the side all good and i've also sealed the little hole there as well for the earth cable so again just to make sure that no rainwater gets in so i've just fitted the vent extraction that's what it looks like from the vent itself to the extractor like this so the mini door is going to go in this bit right here so again i'm just going to seal around here just to make it rainproof again so next up we're going to do a little power automation test and by that what I mean is I've got the timer and I want to make sure that when the timer automatically comes on that it powers the actual inverter itself. So initially I bought a different type of inverter and it just didn't work and the reason for that was it was a manual on off switch. What I wanted was an inverter that I could automatically switch on using the timer. So I came across this one. This is made by Best Tech and it seems to be the, exactly what I want. So the beauty of this inverter is it's a pure sine wave power inverter so what that means is the output's going to be very clean and it's better for the electronics that are actually connected to it in the long term so that's the one we're going to be using so what I've done with this test is I've put the switch on the on position so I'm just going to test it now by manually switching on let's see if it works yep yeah, looks good we've got a green light so that looks good to me. So if we set this up on a schedule, hopefully that will switch the inverter on and we're good to go. And basically we'll switch it off as well a couple of hours later so we're not absolutely draining the battery. So that's the plan. Now, next thing is, let's get the mini Doge Miner set up and connected as well. Finally, I've got everything in place. So, mini Doge is inserted. There's your ducting and the vent on the outside to get rid of the hot air when it's on. This is the mains power supply for the mini doge. That's connected to the inverter. Inverter is switched on. Now the inverter's got two USB slots, so I'm using one of the USB slots for the Wi-Fi bridge, right, that one right there. Then it's going from Wi-Fi to Ethernet to the back of the mini doge. So right now I'm setting the timer for about two minutes time. That's what time is gonna come on. And off. Okay, and that's the off time right there. Okay. 
So it's on auto. Let's see if it comes on. So you might have noticed the lights already on the Wi-Fi bridge. Well, that's got a built-in rechargeable battery, so that's the reason why that's working. So when this is all running, it's also not only providing the internet, but it's also charging the battery in there. So when the battery and the power's off, it'll still continue going for about 20 to 30 minutes while the battery runs out. Okay, 10 seconds left. Let's see if it works. Power's on. Inverters come on. Mini Doja started up. Looking good so far. And we have power right there as well. So everything looks like it started up, which is great. We've got power to the inverter, power to the mini doge power supply, and obviously the mini doge itself, producing a lot of sound when it starts up, but everything looks like it's working. So the timer off has just gone off and everything has switched off as well. Perfect. So next thing I'm going to do is going to set up the timer correctly and have it running, and then we'll go and check on the console to see if it's actually mining correctly. So here we are at the console, just logged in, and as you can see, it started mining, and we're getting a hash rate of just over 150. So, looking good. So there you go, savages. It looks like this experiment was well worth it. Everything's automated. The battery will never get flat. It's running exactly six hours, as per the timer. Don't have to touch anything. It's getting its Wi-Fi, using the bridge to the Ethernet device. We've got the inverter and everything set up here. We've got extraction so all i'm going to do is basically monitor this over the next few weeks and if i'm happy with how it goes i might add another battery to it so therefore i should be able to increase the amount of time the actual miner is running so during the day the solar panels are going to be charging the battery and getting that topped up to 100 percent and then at night via our timer the mini doge is going to kick into action for a few hours and then basically switch itself off ready to be charged for the next day so there you go, savages. Probably a bit of a long video, but I just wanted to do this experiment, which I've been meaning to do for some time, as the electric cost is so high. So I just wanted to see if I could run this off solar power and fully automated, which I think I've achieved. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comment section below. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you, savages, on the next one.